Today on the bench we have the HP 7035B XY recorder. Uh, it's an XY chart recorder that has been donated by a viewer, Kevin Cunningham. Thanks, Kevin. I've been looking for one of those for uh, a while. And I need it because I want to make some uh, measurements on the uh, Apollo hardware. It's the one back there that I need to make a filter for. And it would be a good idea to plot. Uh, the results on an XY plotter. This cutie comes to us from the early 1960s and was the budget model, which would have set you back only $800 in 1963. It was made by HP's first ever acquisition, the Mosley Company, which would later be known as HP San Diego Division and would give us all the HP GL plotters you have seen in previous videos. It is itself the cost-reduced version of the more potent Mosley 135, designed even earlier. It's a servo-controlled uh, machine with a, a, a pot, uh, which is on the slider over here and another one over there. They made it very easy to access, so here you go. And here it is, you can see the slide where it's just right there. So there's a leaf spring over here that you have push it there we go voila and now it will come apart yep all right so this appears in good shape i think it will clean fine uh, i'll just use alcohol first and then contact cleaner uh, i usually do my cleaning with mostly isopropanol it gets rid of most of the dirt, okay, it needs to be cleaned. So there is not much oxidation at all, so I think all I'll do is do the oxid on a piece of wipe. And on this side to remove the plate, it's just four screws, so it's really easy. So I need to get in there so I can lubricate this and check for backlash and there is no backlash. Okay. The only backlash I see is here. That should be tighter and there is an adjustment here at the back. We'll see if it works first and then uh, just the backlash second. This is some 0W20 oil. I should probably do on the plastic gear over here. Make sure I don't put it somewhere else. Okay, let's take a peek inside now. I am particularly excited to see an unusual component called a photo chopper. We'll definitely need elevator music to explain this unusual animal. So let's say we have to build a servo amplifier. It's a high sensitivity instrumentation grade operational amplifier and it's 1960 so we can't buy it in an IC. We have to build it ourselves out of discrete transistors. It will have two important sections, the differential preamp, which is the sensitive part that matters, followed by a power amplifier. But there is a problem. If I set the input to zero volts, the output will not be zero volts. This is because our differential input stage is made of individual transistors, resulting in a small input offset, usually on the order of 10 millivolts. But our amplifier is super sensitive. In the case of our plotter, the lowest range is one millivolt per inch. So the offset is much bigger than the signal and will send the pen up to the rails. Now, we could deal with it by providing a counter offset that you adjust by hand with an adjustable pot, for example. But that won't work either. The offset is very sensitive to minute temperature variations between the transistors, and it will start to drift all over the place. You'd be zeroing your recorder all the time. However, a solution to this problem was invented in 1949 in the tube era by a very clever chap named Edwin Goldberg. He added a switch at the entrance of the amplifier, which was actually a fast relay. 
he actuated the relay at a few tens of hertz, which chopped the slow input signal and transformed it into AC. So now, assuming that the input signal is something else than zero volts, one gets a square wave at the output. Mind you, it is still on top of a large DC offset that has been amplified. The next trick is to add a capacitor between the stages. Only the AC goes through the cap and the DC offset is blocked at each stage and not amplified into a large air. The first stage DC offset doesn't matter anymore. Now all you need to do to complete the amp is to add an unchopper stage at the end. And voila, you have invented the chopper op amp. Congratulations! You can still buy their improved descendants today, the chopper stabilized op amp, like the AD8571 from analog devices, with offsets down to microvolt. But we're not done, it's 1960 after all, the era of solid state electronics, and we don't want to use a clunky relay for our chopper. That's where our photo chopper comes in. It uses a photoresistor as the switch element. You guessed it, a photoresistor is a resistance which value changes with illumination, from tens of megaohms in the dark to a few hundred ohms when illuminated. A light control switch, really. We need two of them that close in alternance to complete our switch. To activate them, we can't use light bulbs as that would be way too slow and we won't have LEDs either for another 20 years. So instead, we are going to use a miniature neon bulb. We connect it to the mains through a diode and a resistor, so it will light up every half cycle at 60 Hz, assuming we are in the States. We use the same circuit for the other half of the switch, this time with the diode in the other direction, so the bulbs are illuminated in alternance. All right, we can get rid of the mechanical switch altogether now. You can use the same scheme at the output end to unchop things, but in our case, the plotter uses another trick that we don't need to get into. All right, photo chopper amp done. Oh, I see my photo choppers right there. I think that's what it is. A photo resistor transistor at each end and a neon tube at the other end. And I took mine out of its little tube and indeed it looks like a cadmium sulfide uh, photoresistor. So let's put a little bit of contact cleaner on the rotary switches and check the capacitors. So from the schematic, I thought it was okay to test the few caps um, in circuit. It's 100 microfarad test, that's 113, 107, 98. So those appear that they are not modern Chinese capacitors. They are good old capacitors that have retained all their capacitance. This one in circuit, it says 283 and should be 350 but all it does is the pen lift I think it doesn't go to the electronics it goes to the solenoid that lifts the pen so I think we are fine to leave it at that and I don't think I have to reform anything I can just go straight and put the uh, 110 volts on it Some groans. Pen down, pen up. That works. Servo on. Okay. Zero. Whoops. That's not working. So it went. Okay. Oh, this one goes. So why? The white servo works. But X. We got nothing. Okay, so do we have chopping action? Can we see? Oh yeah, I do. So that is fine. The neons are striking. Okay, then we just have to figure out what's what's happening. So this is basically two big op amps. 
right? Then we have to take it from one end and see if it comes at the other end as it should. As to the whole schematics of this thing, um, there is the Y amplifier and the X is the same, so they don't repeat it. Uh, so we're going to start with just a power supply. It's just done with power zeners. Two power zeners in series, one that drops to, fi to 15 volt and the other one that drops to 9 volt. All right, and it gives you an order of the ripple. Let's go look at that. And if we turn it on, it starts good and then it goes to zero. Looks as if we were AC couple, but I'm not. Ah, okay, this is better. I just changed the ground. I grounded myself to the chassis before but apparently the chassis is not it over here move that from the chassis to over here and now it's a lot better all right do the same for the negative supply it looks the same oh the two channels are isolated that is why okay that makes sense so that X and Y completely independent. They can be grounded differently, which is why the chassis ground doesn't work. Okay, so that's the second channel, which is fine. And then we need the negative. Oh! No negative supply. I have the plus voltages, but I have Zippo zero on the minus voltages and I have nothing over there. So since I have the plus, I would suspect it's uh, one of the two diodes or two diodes that don't work. This diode is a short. Okay, I need to get in there and solder a diode. Okay, it fell right out. Okay, this one. This one is good. Okay, did I take the wrong one? So now wait a second. This diode, we removed it, still shorted. This one's good. This one is good. This one is also shorted. What? Is the negative cap shorting? Okay, maybe that explains it. This diode looks shorter, but it's not shorter. I removed the diode, it's good. So is the capacitor shorted or is the transformer shorted? So here is the cap in question. Zero volts across it, it failed short. Okay. Right, so that would be better than a transformer short. Okay, I, I didn't have the right kind. I can never remember which one's the actual actual which one's the radial so i made this it's uh, i thought i measured all the caps before so i think and it tested good so it might have failed when i repaired it and it's a 25 volt cap on 20 volts so it's pretty stressed maybe i should replace them all all right try yeah minus 23 volts did i recover XY oh. certainly did something. It was making this weird noise because it was at the end of a travel, but I think we have recovered X servo action and Y servo action. Okay, let's do a quick test. I have my uh, precision voltage su supply from HP, of course x-axis one volt per inch so if i go one volt it moved one two three four five six seven eight nine oops one back to zero zero one say 1.1 2 2.2 .2. yeah this one is too high also uh, so the gain makes it a little stuffer and the calibration is actually to adjust it so we should be right on the dot that's on zero one two three four five six seven eight nine we got it 
one, two, three, and the bar, you can probably see it, it's right there, four, five, six, seven, it's in the middle of it. Okay, so it should be adjusted. That brings us to the very annoying question of the pen, and I tried a few, I have them down here. Unfortunately, the original stubby plotter pens that fit the 7035B are different from the later plotter pens that we revived in another episode, and I could not find any of them anywhere, so not these ones. But it turns out the simplest solution, the one that worked the best on normal paper, was our sponsor's pen. It was almost meant to be the PCB way pen. You can doodle all you want. If you want uh, something that's closer to the original result, pilot pens, of which I have a few, are a good solution, but they work best on better paper. So I use the back of photo paper. I think the best one was the Pilot Razor Point 2, and I just put some tape around it to make it the right thickness. I think you just put it like that. So these need a lot less pressure, so they work with the original setup. So I have the pen on off. And how does that work? There we go. This one makes a super beautiful trace. But you need a really good paper, if not it bleeds, so you can't do it on regular paper. So we got it to a point where it kinda sorta worked good enough to trace a curve. However, when you look closely, something was off. There was a lot of wiggle in the trace that shouldn't have been there. So, I was noticing some wiggles in the curves, uh, you can see them pretty good over here. It was most obvious at very low speeds. It looked almost like a staircase. I think it's the X. And if I make it work here, you can see that this wheel is kind of jerky. And if I take it off, I turn that, there is no jerk at all into the mechanicals. Then I was checking the tension with this fancy tool. 33. So it's almost in spec. I'm going to loosen it a little bit to see if it changes anything, uh, but if it doesn't, then I'll bet you it's an electronic problem. So I readjusted all the mechanics. Uh, the pulley was not quite straight, was wobbly. And uh, the tension of the belt is now perfect. It's at 25 ounce right in the middle. The motor is still not doing good. And if I check the photo chopper, there is a little bit of a suspicious action. Uh, green is the y-axis, which is doing fine. Yellow is the x-axis, and you can see it's all lazy. You yeah, see how it's not chopping quite right. So one side of my amplifier, one photo register, one neon is lazy. All right, it looks like we've hit another snag and we'll need a deeper dive into the photo chopper after all. Fret not, we will get it to work right eventually and even make a fancy etch-a-sketch out of it. But I'm afraid it will take another episode. See you then!